Gary V is in Virgin Radio. Yo. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, when now people ask you, who is Gary V? What's the best description that you that you give to people? I usually just say I'm an entrepreneur, you know, and, and obviously that's become a cool thing, a cliche thing. Yeah. You know, I'm 43 years old. When I was a kid growing up in the 80s, I was born in the former Soviet Union and came to the US. You know, I was a very bad student, but I was selling things and it was very frowned on. Most of my teachers and most of my friends' parents didn't think I would be successful mm. because school was the only way out in the 80s or 90s. So for me to watch entrepreneurship or starting a business become a viable option for not just kids, everybody is exciting. At the same token, if you if you consume my content, I'm very worried that everybody now thinks they're an entrepreneur and it's yes. hard. Mm. So self-awareness has be, is clearly the thing that I most I'm interested in. Yeah. I was self-aware and I had self-esteem as a young kid and that really drove me to everything that makes me happy. And I'm not looking for people to be entrepreneurs. I'm looking them, for them to figure themselves out and feel comfortable in their own skin. Mm. How, you, how did you, when, when did you know that, you know what, this is what I'm doing? Let's bounce around. That I've always known. You know, I, I was selling baseball cards, lemonade. When it snowed, I shoveled instead of went sledding. I've always been sell, 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 business, business, business. That's over here. The far more interesting thing to bring value to people that are driving right now, I just, you know, your grandparents couldn't do anything once they got home at 6, 7, 8 p.m., right? They, they, they couldn't start a business. There was no opening up a store. You have a phone. The penetration of mobile in the entire Middle East, UA, it, it's remarkable. And so for me, it's like, look, if you're not, ha look, if you're happy, if you're happy with what you do and you're happy providing for your family and you get home and you wanna watch TV or YouTube or whatever you wanna do, if you're happy, I have nothing to say to you. If you're not, I'm not gonna let you dwell or make pretend that there's no options. You know, there just is 7 p.m. to midnight. If you're, if you're unhappy, you owe it to yourself to do something between 7 p.m. and midnight while providing for your family right. or your mortgage. And more importantly, if you really look at it, and look, it's fun to be here in, in this incredible place of, of luxury in a lot of ways. Most people have to provide for their families because their car and their home and their clothes are too expensive for their realities. And all they really care about is looking good in front of everybody else. So true. So to me, it becomes a, a very complicated question. If you're driving right now and you're ha unhappy, can you quit your job? If you cannot, are your overhead, are your expenses too rich for you? Mm. And why are they? And it all goes down to insecurity and valuing other people's opinions over your own happiness. Get You're you. looking for the validation through the cars, through the 100%. clothes, through the, the house. A hundred percent. Or from, or listen, from your parents. Mm. Like, you know, it's not very easy to live a life where all of your actions are predicated on other people's opinions, whether your family or whether your friends or whether the comments on social media, people are suffocated by judgment. Yeah. Um, you know, my mom did too good of a job and allowed me not to hear anything else and I've been navigating that way from the beginning. Talking to you when the mics are off is even more interesting yeah. if you, <laughs> it doesn't stop. No. You get people come in, you get you get artists and superstars and they'll come in and they turn it on when the mic's on. Interesting. And when the mic's off, they're off. Interesting. They just um, sit there and, and you, you, you are on, you're just, I love that. I got, that's cool. You know, some, you know, and honestly, I have empathy for people that need to shut it off. For me, this is like yeah. the most fun. Like people, like this is, you know, social media, the timing of my life is laughable to me. To me, I love people so much. Interacting with people is my oxygen. Yeah, but yeah. you were right. asking about us as people, you know, you were asking about how we started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not many people do that when they come into the studio, you know? It's a human connection. Well, it's, it's funny, connection. social media is so powerful, which you're on, and, and this is what, for us as radio presenters, it's the first time in our careers that we're allowed we can interact one on one yes. with people that listen to the show so after the show it. I will get onto Instagram and reply yeah. to nearly every single Instagram message that I get we couldn't do that you know 10 years ago that was this is a new even though radio is an old school platform it's now new school for us 100% and it's really the origin of my career when I was doing the wine show on YouTube there wasn't that many people watching but every single person that mention me or wine even yep. on Twitter I engaged with and I used to do it for like 9-10 hours a day 
And it's really how I built myself up. For everybody who's listening, who's trying to become an influencer. I was just gonna ask, yeah. You know, it, it's not just taking a nice picture from the frame, right? It's yeah. also engaging with the three people that say that's an, the audacity of somebody who wants to become famous and they get five comments and they don't have time to say thank you. Yeah. I'm so like, true. You're, you're not going anywhere. I love that reply to the comments. In Studio 2, uh, yes. three people, uh, listeners of this show, we put it out last week to ask Gary a question. I love this. We got close to over a 1,000 entries, and uh, I'm going to bring in Jeremy, Carl, and Emma. Please Yay! welcome to the studio. Yay! There's Gary V. There he is. Go Hi. say it's all right. It's so nice to meet you. This is so cute. How's it going? How are you? Yeah, I met this guy outside. He had Krispy Kreme and everything. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Uh, Emma, Hi. please welcome to the microphone. You're with Gary V. Hi, Emma. Take it, take it, go, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I've just completely forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Um, so do you need a bit of time? No, no, We're no, here. that's fine, that's okay. fine. So I, I've been running a business in Dubai for six years. It started off just something small to work around the kids. And it is, I see the potential in it. It's got potential, but the, the social market changes so much. That yes. Everything's changing fast and it's hard to keep up with it. So I guess my question what, what, was... What was working for you when you say the social... Facebook. Okay, and now? No. Why? I, Organic or ads? The ads, I don't understand them. They change. It changes how it reaches the reach. It, when you run ads, it's about not only who you're targeting, but you ha the biggest issue right now is people aren't making enough content. So yeah. you had an ad working that's yeah. not working, you need to make new ads, lots of new ads. Okay. 50 videos, okay. 50 pictures, you see where I'm going. Yeah, uh, Facebook yeah. works better than ever. Yeah. Instagram ads work better than ever. Yeah. The problem is most people have one picture or one ad or two that work, yeah. then they keep running it, it stops working, and they think Facebook doesn't work anymore without realizing it's the ad that's not working yeah. anymore. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah, that, it's as yeah. simple as that. Yeah. And Light bulb you can have some yeah. more time with, with and Gary. And Instagram influencers, like yeah. the first answer. Like, I started that, yeah. Especially in this market. Yeah. Like my whole right. career, everything I've done, people have been telling me is a fad. When I launched an e-commerce wine site in 1996, the internet was a fad. When I started running Google ads instead of newspaper and direct mail, Google was a fad. When I started my YouTube show, YouTube was mm. a fad. When I invested in Facebook and Twitter, that was a fad. Like everything that I do yep. tends to be a fad or isn't gonna happen. Usually when most conservative or people above or older or successful than me say something I'm doing is a fad, I've come to learn that's when I need to triple down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, I get that, makes sense. Um, there's a couple of things I wanna play for you right now. Uh, number one, were you aware that there is a Filipino star called Gary V. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, can you come up? Uh, yes. Carl, you're, you're Filipino, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Carl, because He's when huge. I said in the studio the other day, I said, oh my gosh, we've got Gary V coming in. Um, one of our presenters, Jay Sky, yeah. Sky, who's Filipino, she goes, oh my gosh, Gary <laughs> Valenciano's coming in. She got so excited. <laughs> and I went, who? He's a huge Filipino pop star. Is, yeah. is this guy? Is this guy? He's very big. Even when I show, uh, showed my friends who's, who's Gary V is, I said Google him. So Gary Valenciano comes up and Google him. <laughs> this, is your, this is your I competition, know that bro. I saw his face when I first started having internet kind of notoriety. A lot of people. I mean, he would always show up. It would always be brought up. I think I've done a good job in the last five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, cl I've closed, I've closed yeah. the gap. I've closed right, the gap. Right. I have a lot of respect for him. I've we've, listened to too much of his songs. <laughs> we've got him on the phone right now. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was hoping. Um, there, there's something else that I want to do with you. Uh, my, we're talking about our kids. You're a family man yes. as well. You, you, just real quickly, again, I want that advice. Juggling the family and the business and the life, how, how hard is that? How, how, how do you make it easier? Is there a way? I think it's actually stunningly easy as long as you don't succumb to other people's opinions on how you should parent your children or the current state of what's politically correct, mm -hmm. it gets very easy. Uh, parenting comes very easy to me. Uh, I have great intent, but you know, for example, there's a big Thanksgiving uh, kind of recital in the morning for my kids this week. I'm gonna yep. miss it because I'm here. Sure. I'm not happy about it, yep. but I'm not crushed. I'm not gonna judge myself like I'm the right. worst dad of all time. Showing your kids how to live happy 
is the number one thing you can do for your children. Because your mother was very like influential in that factor, right? When you were younger, huge. But but you know, in a but my dad worked every minute because we were immigrants. He never came to anything I did. And very honestly, my mom didn't go to school stuff either. She was kind of like an immigrant lady. She was to herself. Like, it, it you know basically for me, it's very binary. Do your parents love you and put you in a position to be happy? Everything else is checking the box for everybody else. Mm. So well said. Um, talking about my kids, what I did, this is what I've got right now for you. I've got my girls, Nushi and Kiki, doing some of yours. Your, have a listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> have a listen to this. Here we go. Gary V, read by Nushi and Kiki, my daughters. Let me tell you a very, very <laughs> important thing. I believe one of the most fascinating excuses in life is... I'm so good at so many things that I don't know which one to pick. She's right. I think it's an excuse and I think it's ego. I think it's a vulnerability. <laughs> I think it's I don't want to waste my time because I'm so good at many things is so an good. excuse to not do. Truth. And it's the worst one because you're trying to act cool while not doing anything. Pick something and do it. You're a young kid. You can do all 19 things. These are your words, word it's for word. Amazing. I then got my seven-year-old Kiki to deliver her one. The game itself is to win. And it's no different being a mother or a teacher. Or even a public servant or a lawyer. <laughs> the people that win in life are the ones that found the things they like. The reason most people fail is they want a life soul that their love doesn't support. That's because they worry about other people's opinions. And that's a big one, worrying Amazing. about other people's opinions. You always hit that one, and that's a big thing, right? It, you know, after doing this for about seven or eight years where you're getting a thousand comments back in email, DM, whatever it may be, it took me a long time, but I'm like, oh my God, it's judgment, it's other people's mm. opinions. It was so foreign to me because I was in such a cocoon. I, I never listened, you know, so many things that kept me away from bad things as a teenager was I was in my own head. Nobody else's opinion penetrated me which didn't lead me to those actions. So it was foreign to me to realize, oh my God, the rest of the world lives a different way. Yeah. Yep. And, and that is why I'm trying to suffocate that because the more I can get people into a place of feeling confident about themselves for themselves, it, it, it's unbelievable what happens when you can actually cut out the noise of judgment of others. It's Man. a big deal. And honestly, and it's fun to be in this region because it's, it's a phenomenon outside the US, even though it's big in the US, it's parents. The amount of people right now who are listening, who are living their lives 100% based on their parents' opinions mm. is staggering. Now, let me create some clarity. If you want your parents to pay for your lifestyle, well, guess what? Then they own you. Yes. <laughs> but if you don't, yeah. and you know, and you want to be happy, and you don't want to be an engineer or a doctor or an entrepreneur or, or whatever it may be, you first have to get off the payroll, be a big boy and girl, mm. and then you have to do. You may have some short-term pain where your parents are disappointed, but long-term you will have a far healthier so relationship. So because true. the only thing your parents usually are worried about, unfortunately, is the judgment of others. It's What's, your, what are they going to think? It's your aunt. That is the hidden mm. issue. Yeah, because your mom, your mom's trying to make you a lawyer because she wants her sister to think you're successful. It's a very complicated mindset, but it's the truth. Yeah, Gary V, you spent nearly an hour with us. Really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in studio this morning, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be at the Charge Entrepreneur Festival. Check him out, Gary V. One last thing for you, mate. You need a theme song. You're either going backwards or you're going forwards. There's no. Neutral in the way that we live this. Back, 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 backwards. No neutral in the way we live this. Like, 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 this is basic. Like, back, forwards. Listen, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Listen, post once, make it four. Post four, four. Listen, 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 listen. If you post once a day on Instagram, make it, make it, make it, make it four. <laughs> you floss, you front, and it's the biggest fuck, 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 fuck. Virgin Radio.